Hello and welcome to tutorial number 10 of the standard amateur radio course brought to you by the Radio and Electronics School. Uh, these materials are copyright to the Radio and Electronics School. We've just done inductors. Uh, it's appropriate now that we do a tutorial on transformers because inductors and transformers uh, are really one and the same thing. Inductors and transformers work on the principle of Faraday's law. Faraday's law states when there's relative motion between a conductor and a magnetic field, an EMF or voltage is induced into the conductor or the coil of wire. I'm just going to take you to the supplementary section of the RES website and show you once more the animation of Faraday's law because I'm going to be talking a fair bit about this during Transformers. We've looked at this before. Here we go. Uh, so we have a coil of wire and we have a magnetic field. The magnetic field in this case is being supplied by a magnet. The magnet is being moved into and out of the coil of wire and it's producing an induced voltage in the coil of wire. When the magnet is stationary, the voltage is zero. When there's maximum relative motion, the voltage is maximum. The voltage alternates between <coughs> positive here, negative there, <coughs> then positive here, negative there. This type of generation of voltage produces a sine wave. However, the, we don't need to use a permanent magnet. What's going on here is relative motion between a magnetic field and a conductor. That magnetic field does not have to be provided by a permanent magnet. What if we were to put another coil of wire inside this coil of wire and connect a battery to it and, and turn it on and off? Well, that coil of wire on the inside would produce a changing magnetic field and that changing magnetic field would induce a voltage into this coil. When we do that, the inner coil is called the primary, the one that has the power supplied to it, and the outer coil is called the secondary, and that is the basis of a transformer, which we'll be discussing, and I'll just repeat this law again for you. You won't be examined on this law, but it's just so important to understand how transformers uh, and inductors work to understand Faraday's law. When relative motion exists between a conductor and a magnetic field, an EMF is induced into the conductor. Here we have another demonstration of Faraday's law using, instead of a permanent magnet, we're using two inductors. We've got a magnetic core it could be made of iron or soft iron would be better or it could be laminated iron we'll talk about that shortly but it has a core material that will concentrate magnetic lines of force here we're using DC to to switch the magnetic field on and off around this inductor the magnetic field that is created by this inductor will induce a voltage into this inductor. When this is done like this, the inductor that has the power supplied to it is called the primary and the inductor that has the power delivered to it is called the secondary. Every time we close or open the switch there will be a changing magnetic field around the primary and this will induce a voltage into the secondary and the galvanometer will read a voltage in either polarity because when we open the switch the magnetic field is collapsing the magnets being taken out the voltage is induced in one direction one polarity when the switch is closed the magnetic field is expanding and voltage is induced into the secondary producing a voltage in the opposite direction so this would produce AC uh, and <coughs> 
we call it a transformer, when we have two inductors coupled together magnetically so that the magnetic field around one inductor induces a voltage into the second inductor, we've got a transformer. This is the primary, this is the secondary, this is the core. If we replace the battery with a source of AC, then there will be a continually changing magnetic field around the primary inductor and there will be a continually changing or AC voltage in the secondary inductor. That's the basis of transformer action. It relies on Faraday's law. When relative motion exists between a conductor and a magnetic field, an EMF is induced into the conductor. This is called a mutually coupled transformer and between the primary and the secondary we have a property called mutual inductance. That's why the real name for transformers is mutually coupled transformers. When we arrange two inductors on the same core so that the magnetic field around one of those conductors induces an EMF into the second conductor, which are both coils of wire, we have a transformer. The simplest transformer is just two inductors with the magnetic fields coupled between them. So if we put an AC source onto the primary inductor, there will be a voltage induced into the secondary inductor and that's called a transformer. And we've learned that that voltage is produced across the space between them, because this is air in the middle here, uh, by Faraday's law of induction. So the coil, that the, the winding that the uh, supply is connected to is called the primary winding and the supply that this, the energy is taken away from is called the secondary winding. And, and in this circuit, there would be AC here all the time. The amount of AC will depend upon the ratio of the turns between the primary and the secondary. If this was uh, 100 volts, AC RMS, we always refer to AC as at its RMS value, so it's 100 volts AC RMS, and if the turns ratio here was 1 to 1, that means for every turn on the primary, there's a turn on the secondary. So there could be a thousand turns on the primary and there would be a thousand turns on the secondary. So that turns ratio between the primary and the secondary is one to one. In that case, the output voltage here would be exactly the same as the input voltage, 100 volts AC RMS. A transformer that has a one-to-one -one turns ratio, that is the ratio to the primary to the secondary turns is one-to-one, -one, is called an isolation transformer. You won't be tested on that, but isolation transformers are used when people are working on high voltage equipment. Uh, it, rather than just connect that equipment straight into the mains, uh, which means they could go across the mains, it's normal to run the 240 volt equipment through a one-to-one -one power transformer uh, and it provides a degree of safety uh, to the technician working on the equipment. But there'll be no um, questions in your assessment on isolation transformers, one-to-one -one transformers. Suppose our turns ratio, suppose we had 100 volts RMS AC applied and suppose our turns ratio was for every hundred turns on the primary we have one turn on the secondary so our turns ratio then is a hundred to one. The turns ratio will also give us the voltage ratio is the same as the voltage ratio so the voltage ratio between primary and secondary is also 100 to 1. So for every volt on the primary, we're going to get one volt on the secondary. 
because the voltage ratio between primary and secondary is the same as the turns ratio. So if we had 100 volts going in, we would have 1 volt coming out. That's called a step down transformer because we're stepping down voltage from 100 volts to 1 volt. It's worth mentioning at this point that how much power is delivered to the primary uh, controls how much power you can get from the secondary. The power in the primary equals the power in the secondary minus the losses in the transformer. But transformers are very efficient. We can get efficiencies up to 97, 98% from a transformer. But you can never get more power out from a transformer than you put in. If you step the voltage down, the available current here, the current available in this circuit, is much higher because whatever the power is in the primary that will be the power in the secondary. The power in the primary equals P multiplied by I, I E multiplied by I and, and that's also the power in the secondary as well. So the power in the primary is the primary voltage multiplied by the primary current. Let's say that came out to be uh, 10 watts. So the primary voltage multiplied by the primary current gives you 10 watts. Then the maximum power you can get in the secondary, even though you've, you've come down to 1 volt, is also 10 watts. However, if you did P equals E by I in the secondary, you would find that the current is much higher because we now only have 1 volt. So the current in the secondary is much higher to give us the same power as the current in the primary. In the last example we saw a step up transformer. Suppose instead we had a turns ratio of 1 to 10. So that's the turns ratio. It's also the voltage ratio because the turns ratio is the same as the voltage ratio. And let's say we put uh, 5 volts AC RMS on the primary. For every 1 volt on the primary, we're going to get 10 volts on the secondary. So the since the turns ratio is the same as the voltage ratio, the ratio on the voltage on the secondary is going to be 10 times higher than the voltage on the primary, so that's going to be 50 volts. Now this transformer is an air cord transformer. If we increase the strength or concentration of the magnetic field around an inductor or, or the coils of a transformer, uh, we increase the efficiency of the transformer. The problem with air, it's, it, it doesn't have many losses. Air has, is a low loss core, but it doesn't concentrate magnetic lines of force as well. At low frequencies, we put an iron core in the transformer and that's shown on the symbol by just having two lines on the transformer like that. So that's an iron cord transformer. The iron is laminated and I'll talk, talk about that in, in a few moments what laminated iron core means. But laminated iron cord transformers are used up to about 100 kilohertz. They're used at power frequencies 50 hertz, they're used at audio frequencies and up to about 100 kilohertz. And after that, the iron core actually starts to uh, become too hot. The iron core is made of iron, and iron's a conductor. And because the core is in the presence of a changing magnetic field, an EMF is actually induced into the core as well as the secondary. If I, if I draw, draw a bit of core material here, what will happen, if that's looking at a bit of core material, there will be circulatory currents induced into the core material and that, and that will cause heating of the core and a loss to the uh, transformer and reducing the efficiency of the transformer. Those currents induced into the core are called eddy currents and they're induced into the core because of Faraday's law. The core is a conductor. When relative motion exists between a conductor and a magnetic field, an EMF is induced into the conductor. So we have to do things to the core to limit the amount of induction of currents into the core because any currents flowing in the core 
represent a loss to the transformer. Transformer's job is to transform voltage between one voltage and another, um, <clears throat> and it can also be used to match impedance. Uh, its, its purpose is not to produce heat, and the core material can produce heat that, that in the form of eddy currents, and we will have to do what we can to eliminate or reduce eddy currents. Here I've brought up a graphic of a laminated iron core. This is a transformer. It has a primary and a secondary. Uh, whether it's a step up or step down will determine the size of wire on the transformer. Step down transformer has very heavy wire on the primary and light wire on the secondary. But the core, you can see that the core here is made up of thin sheets. If you look very closely, you can see instead of a solid block of iron, it's made up of thin sheets. Look there and you can see the laminations. So if we were to put a solid block of iron here in the transformer, the core, if it was solid iron, would be exposed to the changing magnetic fields about the primary, and that would cause very large currents to flow in the core material. That would cause eddy currents and heating of the core material, and that would be a loss to us, which we do not want. So what we do is slice the core up into thin strips Imagine a solid block of iron and all being sliced up into a couple of hundred thin strips and then an insulation material is sprayed on them so that they're not um, going to be touching each other. What you need to remember is this, that at radio frequencies air cores are used, at power frequencies and up to 100 kilohertz transformers use laminated iron cores, which is strips of iron laminations insulated from each other and bolted back together again. So instead of a solid block of iron, we've got thin strips of iron exposed to the magnetic field. Now when a conductor is smaller, it has more resistance. And so each of the laminations on its own has more resistance than a solid block of iron and so the if it has more resistance then the amount of eddy currents induced into the core will be decreased and that's good. At VHF we wouldn't use air or laminated iron we'd use a ferrite core. There's powdered iron that's, that's iron powdered and sprayed with the material and then moulded into a core powdered iron is used uh, then, but the best core for VHF and above is uh, ferrite material. I just want to talk about this turns ratio business a little bit more again. Suppose we had 100, uh, sorry, 10, for every 10 turns on the primary, we have one turn on the secondary. I'll put a T there so you know I'm talking about the turns on the transformer. That doesn't mean we have 10 turns on the primary and one turn on the secondary. What this turns ratio means, for every 10 turns of wire on the primary, we have one turn of wire on the secondary. That's the turns ratio. It's also the voltage ratio. The voltage on the primary and, and the, the ratio between the voltage on the primary and the voltage on the secondary is also going to be 10 to 1. So for every 10 volts we put here, we're going to get 1 volt there. So if I was to put um, 50 volts onto the primary, then for every 10 volts there, I'll get 1 volt here. So <clears throat> I'm going to get 5 volts RMS on the secondary. If it was the other way around, if it was 1 to 10, uh, for every 1 volt on the primary, uh, I would get 10 volts on the secondary. So if I put 5 volts on the primary, I'd get 50 volts on the secondary if the ratio was 1 to 10. Being a step up transformer, this is a step down transformer.
The other thing that uh, you have to have a little bit of an idea about, I don't think you're going to get any, any exam questions on this, but the turns ratio squared is equal to the impedance ratio, a transformer, because it plays with voltage and current in the primary, and, and Z, impedance, we haven't really talked a lot about impedance yet, but think of it as, as resistance. Okay, the impedance ratio um, uh, is affected by a transformer because impedance or resistance equals E over I. And because a transformer manipulates E and I, it also manipulates the impedance between primary and secondary. And the if you want the impedance ratio and you have the turns ratio, you just square the impedance ratio. When you square a number, you multiply it by itself. So the impedance ratio, the Z ratio of this transformer, is 10 squared, which is 100. And 1 squared is 1. So the impedance ratio is 100 to 1. If you know the impedance ratio, you can get the turns ratio by getting the square root of it. The square root of 100 to 1 is 10 to 1. The square of 10 to 1 is 100 to 1. So the turns ratio squared equals the impedance ratio. The, in, the impedance ratio squared gives you the, sorry, the square root of the impedance ratio gives you the turns ratio. You will recall that a capacitor, it, oops, what have I done here? Okay, you'll recall that a capacitor is a conductor separated by an insulator called a dielectric, gives us a capacitor. Well, here we have a conductor, an inductor. Here we have another inductor, and they're not joined to each other, so they're separated by dielectric. So we've got unwanted capacitance in our transformer. We've got an unwanted capacitance between primary and secondary. So what we do about that, and I'll just change my colour. What we do about that is put between the uh, primary and secondary winding a copper shield, draw it like that. It, it doesn't have anything to do with the way the transformer operates, but what it does, it destroys the electric field uh, between the unwanted capacitance between primary and secondary, and that copper shield is earthed, and that's called an electric screen or an electrostatic screen. Here's an example of where a transformer is used to match impedance. This is an oscillator. You don't have to know this circuit, but you can see the speaker here. And before the speaker, we have a laminated iron core transformer. It's a step down transformer, so it'll be stepping impedance down. And the purpose of that transformer there is to match the impedance of this transistor amplifier, which would be rather high to the low impedance of the speaker will typically be about 8 ohms. So transformers are used not just to transform voltage and current but also to change the impedance from one circuit to another so there is impedance matching between the two. Now we've got a circuit of a power supply and we're using a transformer here to transform the mains voltage. The mains voltage is 240 volts AC RMS, 50 hertz, and that's being applied to the primary, and the secondary is giving us a lower voltage. The turns ratio is 10 to 1, T1, the turns ratio is 10 to 1, so if 240 volts is on the primary and the turns ratio is 10 to 1, the secondary voltage will be 24 volts. We'll be talking about the a bit of the rest of this circuit later on when we do power supplies. 
but there's a uh, an example of a transformer being used in a power supply to step the power supply voltage down from 240 volts to 24 volts through a 10 to 1 turns ratio transformer. This is converting the AC to DC and this is filtering, filtering and regulating it. There's a filter capacitor there, uh, uh, a xenodiode which we'll talk about later, a transistor. That's a basic low voltage power supply that would be suitable for operating an amateur transceiver. Our purpose in looking at this is really just to look at the application of the laminated iron cord transformer. This is a photo of a typical uh, low current uh, mains transformer that would transform the mains voltage down from 240 volts to some lower voltage for use in say an amateur radio station. You can't see the laminations of this transformer because this metal cover hides them. If you were to remove that metal cover, you would see the laminations of the iron core. Pictured here is, is how one method of producing the iron core. If you can imagine this I section being bolted there so that you would then have a closed system and the windings of the transformer are wound over the, the center portion of the lamination there. So primary and secondary would be wound over the top of each other there. This would make a like a figure eight section and that's where the cores are wound there. That's the laminations. You need to remember that those laminations are sprayed with an insulation material so that when they're bolted together they don't actually electrically touch each other. On the right hand side is, a, is an IF transformer, a radio frequency transformer. This would be very small. This would be about 10 millimeters. This would be about 15 millimeters and it solders into a circuit board. In there you would have a primary and a secondary and you see there's a screwdriver adjustment there. The core of this transformer would be a ferrite slug and if you put a plastic alignment tool into that coil you can move that slug in and out and change the coupling between the primary and the secondary at radio frequencies. Just doing a little bit of summarising now, here's our transformer back again, air cord transformer would be laminine, laminated on uh, for uh, frequencies from 50 hertz up to 100 kilohertz to reduce eddy currents. <clears throat> Let's say the turns ratio of this transformer is 10 to 1. The turns ratio equals the impedance ratio. They're the one and the same thing. I'm sorry, but the turns ratio equals the voltage ratio, not the impedance ratio. So the voltage ratio is also 10 to 1. So if we had 240 volts on the primary and the turns and voltage ratio was 10 to 1, then our secondary voltage would be 24 volts, 1 tenth AC RMS. If you wanted the impedance ratio of this transformer, uh, the impedance ratio equals the turns ratio squared. So I need, just got to do a superscript 2 there. If you know the turns ratio and you want the impedance ratio then the square root of the impedance ratio equals the turns ratio. So the impedance ratio of that transformer uh, would be the square of the turns ratio, so the impedance ratio would be 100 to 1.
Alrighty, it's time to do some example exam questions of a type that you could have in, the, have in your standard exam. If you want to test yourself on these questions, go to Drill 7 from the main menu and test yourself. Okay, let's have a look at question 7.1. A 100% efficient transformer, and there's no transformer that's 100% efficient, but they're telling us we've got one here, but they're close to 100%. You can expect 97, 98% efficiency from a very good transformer. So it's 100% efficient. It has a turns ratio of 2 to 1 and a power output of 100 watts. Well, the 2 to 1 turns ratio is a furphy because the power into a transformer and the power out of a transformer has got nothing to do with the turns ratio because the power into a transformer is the same as the power out of a transformer, less losses. But since this transformer is 100% efficient, it doesn't have any losses, so the output is going to be the same as the input, 100 watts. Question 7.2. A matching transformer is used to connect a 15-ohm speaker to the 1500-ohm output of a receiver. What is the turns ratio? So we're told that the impedance ratio is 1500 to 15. Now that can be simplified to 100 to 1. Can you see that if you divide 15 into 1500 you get 100? So you simplify the terms ratio to its simplest form, 100 to 1. So the terms ratio is 100 to 1. The impedance ratio is the square root of the terms ratio, and the square root of 100 to 1 is 10 to 1. So the impedance ratio, the, sorry, the impedance ratio is 100 to 1. The terms ratio is the square root of that. So the answer is B. I've drawn the circuit there. You won't get circuits like this. I've just put the circuits in here to remind you of how a speaker is used uh, to match impedance. This could be a 15 ohm speaker and the output impedance of this transistor could be 1500 ohms. There's a transformer used for impedance matching. Question 7.3. Power transformers usually have laminated iron cores in order to, it's the very first answer, reduce the eddy current losses. Laminated iron cores have nothing to do with increasing the output voltage regulation or to reduce copper losses. Copper losses, uh, I should tell you this, I don't think you'll get questions on it, that's resistive losses in the in the transformer windings. So since the transformer is made of copper coils, they have some resistance and, and that produces a loss and that's called copper loss. Question 7.4, a power transformer has a primary winding of 100 turns and a secondary winding of 500 turns. Okay, just let's look at that for a moment first. So we have a primary winding of 100 turns and a secondary winding of 500 turns. So the turns ratio is 100 to 500, which is the same as 1 to 5. The turns ratio is the same as the voltage ratio. So for every volt on the primary, there's going to be 5 volts on the secondary and there's 200 volts on the primary, so the secondary voltage is going to be 1,000 volts. Seven point five. The electrostatic shield placed between the windings of a radio frequency transformer is used to Remember we said that there is an capa unwanted capacitance between the primary and secondary windings and the way to get away with that is to embed uh, a conductive screen in, into, between the coils of the transformer. I've shown that here with this graphic. So what we've got is a, a copper or brass shield 
in between the windings, doesn't actually electrically touch the windings at all, and it's connected to ground and chassis. That's the electric. And, and the purpose of that is to reduce the capacitance or the capacitive coupling between the primary and the secondary. Reduce the capacitive coupling between the coils. 7.5A 7 7 is the correct answer there. Seven point six. An eight to one step up transformer has a hundred and twenty volts applied to its primary. The secondary voltage is well, it's eight to one step up. So for every eight volts on the primary, there will be sorry, it's a step up. So for every one volt on the primary, there will be eight volts on the secondary because it's eight to one step up, and the primary voltage is one hundred and twenty volts. So the secondary voltage will be eight times that amount which is 960 volts. Seven point seven. Eddy currents are produced when... Let's have a look at our options. We know eddy currents are produced in the core of the material by an expanding and contracting magnetic fields around both the primary and the secondary. Eddy currents are induced into the core when alternating current flows through a coil wound on solid iron. Eddy currents also flow when, when you have laminated iron as well. It's just that they're less. The eddy currents are far less than using solid iron. So laminated iron cores are far more efficient in terms of eddy current loss than solid iron cores. Question 7.8, a laminated iron core has minimum eddy current losses because, well the laminations aren't stacked vertically, but the laminations are insulated from each other. It wouldn't work if those metal laminations didn't have an insulation between them. So A is the, uh, sorry, B is the correct answer there. Question 7.9. The main ob object of using an output transformer in an audio amplifier is to... Well, that was the circuit that I showed you earlier of the little transistor oscillator where we were using a, a transformer to match the output impedance of the oscillator to the impedance of the speaker. So transformers are also used <coughs> to match impedances. 7.9b is the correct answer. A 7.10. Energy is transferred from the primary to the secondary of a power transformer by the process of... And again, I've just put these diagrams in to remind you of things. You won't get them during your real exam and the diagram's not really going to help you answer the question anyway but it reminds you about Faraday's law and mutual inductance between the two coils. Question 7.11, the current ratio of a transformer. The current ratio is the opposite to the voltage ratio so if the voltage ratio is 10 to 1, then the current ratio is 1 to 10. It's the inverse. The current ratio is the inverse of the voltage ratio. The reason for this, if you step voltage up, you must step current down for the power to remain the same. So the current ratio of a transformer is the inverse of the turns ratio. So if the turns ratio, for example, was 15 to 1, in that case, the, the current ratio would be 1 to 15, the inverse of the voltage ratio. Question 7.12. Transformers operate on the principles of Gee, we've got a lot of furfies here. Got nothing to do with Kirchhoff. Certainly got something to do with Faraday. 
Faraday. Um, nothing to do with the eddy current effect. There's no such thing as the eddy current effect. Lenz law, that's, that's a real law. So is Kirchhoff. But transformers, the operation of a transformer is determined by Faraday's law and mutual induction or inductance. That's it for the trial questions on transformers. Before I go, I wanted to show you this uh, website, and you can see the address up there, maxmcarter.com, and it's a transformer ratio calculator that you just might want to play with. You can enter in the, the amount of uh, primary impedance, and I'm putting in 100 ohms here, and the amount of secondary impedance, I've put in 10 ohms, and We've got an option to put in the number of turns on the primary or secondary. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say calculate. And it gives us the results. The primary impedance is 100 ohms. I put that in. The secondary impedance is 10 ohms. The turns ratio is the square root of the impedance ratio. Now, the impedance ratio is 100 to 10, which is the same as 10 to 1. And the square root of 10 is... 0.162 so the turns ratio is 3.162 to 1. That might be a handy little website for you to play with if you want to just to experiment um, with different transformers. You can actually put in the number of turns on the primary or the secondary. I'll say that the primary turns and calculate. There we are. So that gives us the impedances that I put in gives us the turns ratio. I told the program that the primary turns was 2000 and it tells me the secondary turns are 632. And the ratio between 200 to 632 should be 3.162 to 1. That's it for tutorial number 10. Thank you for listening and watching. I hope you're enjoying the course. Cheers for now. This is Ron VK2DQ.